Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. Basic Algebra, this is section 8.2. We're going to look at solving systems of linear equations using the method of substitution. Now, in the previous video, we looked at solving systems by graphing. We're actually going to look at the exact same examples, and we're going to use the method of substitution. Now, the method of substitution is basically choosing a variable to solve for. And once you solve for it, substitute it into the other equation for, the, for that variable. And you'll see how we work that out. But essentially, what that does is it gives you a an equation in a single variable, which you can solve for algebraically. So substitution is an algebraic method we can use to solve these instead of having to graph them. Because sometimes graphing uh, lines can be kind of tedious, maybe if the, our coefficients are larger. So let's look at this example here. If we recall from the other video, we may already know the answer if uh, we retain that information. But how we approach these problems is the first step that you should always do is just to make sure that your equations are maybe in a similar form. So these are both in general form, because that'll help us maybe identify a few things about the equation. So these are both in general form. I'm going to choose a variable to solve for. And it really doesn't matter which variable I solve for or which equation I choose to do it in. But there are some things that we can do to make our uh, solving a little bit easier. Choose a variable that has the smallest coefficient. That's generally a good way to go. Well, I look at this and say, well, this value has a coefficient of 1. 1's smaller than 2 and 3. This one also has a 1. So it would be relatively easy to solve this equation for x. I could just subtract 3y from both sides. I would have it solve for x. But if I looked at this equation, I could solve it for y just as easy, so subtracting 2x from both sides. So let's do that. Let's solve this for y. Choose a variable and solve for it. So if I take this equation and solve for y, I just have to subtract 2x from both sides. So I would have a negative 2x and that positive 5 on the right side. Now, it's called substitution because if y is this value, and we're looking for the solution where the x, y coordinate is the same for both, I want this y to be the same as that y. So I can substitute, take this value and plug it in for y. If y is negative 2x plus 5, replace y with negative 2x plus 5. So I'm going to do that right here. x plus 3 times y equals 5. I'm going to replace the y value or substitute it with negative 2x plus 5. And now I see I only have x's in this equation. So I can sim simplify and solve for it, distribute to get rid of parentheses, x minus 6x plus 15 equals 5. x minus 6x is going to be negative 5x. I can subtract 15 from both sides. And then divide by negative 5. Well, negative 10 divided by negative 5 is a positive 2. So I found x is 2. Well, now that I know what x is, I need to find out what, uh, what y is. I can take this value and plug it back into either of these equations. But because I already did this work to solve for y, I can plug it in right here. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. So y equals 1 when x equals 2. 2, 1 would be my ordered pair. Now I need to check that work. Since I use this equation for my substitution and to determine what y is, let's plug both of those points into the other equation just to make sure that 2, 1 is a solution in both. Or if you're comfortable with it, plug it into both equations just to check. If I put 2 in here and 3 times 1 for my y, is this a true statement? Yes, it is. It checks out. That value works in this equation. Just to be extra sure, I'm going to plug it into here. 2 times 2 is 4. And if y is 1, is 4 plus 1 equal to 5? Yes, it is. It checks out in this equation as well. This is the solution to our original system of equations. So it looks like a lot of work. 
And algebraically, it, it kind of is. But we don't need to rely on the graph. And we don't have to make sure we have the perfect straight edge and things like that. We can solve it algebraically. We can check our work algebraically as well. And when we find a solution, hopefully we recall from uh, the previous lecture, this is a consistent system. There is one solution consistently. It is a consistent system, one solution. All right, let's look at another example. Here we have the line 2x plus y equals 4 and the line y equals negative 2x minus 2. Now, the first thing you should always do is put them in the same form. But we're not going to do that. We'll do that after we're all done. Now, if I look at this and I say, well, I'm going to use the method of substitution. I want to solve for a variable. Well, it's my lucky day because one of my variables is already solved for. y equals negative 2x minus 2. So I can jump right to a substitution. So if y equals this value, I can plug it into the other equation for y. So I get 2x plus y, which is this quantity, negative 2x minus 2 will be equal to 4. So I just took this and plugged it into there. You can see my 2x. The y becomes this value, and it's equal to 4. And if I simplify this, well, these parentheses aren't necessary because a positive distributed through doesn't change any signs. So 2x minus 2x is 0x's. And that would just leave me with negative 2 equals 4. Hmm. Well, I know that negative 2 does not equal 4. This is a false statement. Well, this actually does tell me something. Sometimes having a false statement helps me to understand what's happening here. Negative 2 will never be 4. This is not consistent. It is actually inconsistent, which means there is no value that will ever make negative 2 equal to 4. This is why we call it inconsistent. This is not consistent. So this is an inconsistent, which means no solution. All right, and I'll just abbreviate. Now, let's, uh, let's see why it's no solution. Now, I said the first thing you should always do is actually simplify your equations. Let's go back to our equations. I look at this one. It's in general form, and this one's in slope-intercept. Let's put this one in slope-intercept. To do that, I need to solve for y. To solve for y, I need to subtract 2x from both sides, bring it over with that positive 4. If we look at these two equations, we see they have the same slope but different intercepts. If lines have the same slope with different intercepts, they're parallel. Parallel lines never intersect. Never will negative, be, negative 2 be equal to 4, like our equation had said. It's inconsistent. Let's look at this example here. Now, here I have the equation in general form, and here I have it in some other form. Uh, what I can do here is say, well, let's not uh, rearrange it. Not, let's not put it in the same order. Let's just go ahead and do a substitution. So I could solve this for y, or I could solve it for x. I could do anything, but I choose the smallest coefficient. Maybe I choose this, or maybe I say, hey, if I divide by 2, I'd have that solved. But let's solve this for y. I have to subtract 3x from both sides y equals negative 3x plus 0 is just negative 3x. And now I can do a substitution. If I do a substitution, if y is this value, I can plug it in. If I plug it into there, I get 2 times negative 3x equals negative 6x. And if I simplify, I get negative 6x equals negative 6x. Maybe we see something already here. Negative 6x is negative 6x. This is a true statement no matter what I put in for x. But if I didn't rec recognize that right away, I'd say, well, I see x is on either side of the equation. Let's put it together. Let's get our x's on one side. So if I add 6x to both sides, I get 0 equals 0. If you continue all the way until you get numbers, well, we have to think about it. 0 equals 0. That's a true statement. 0 is 0. It is what it is. But it doesn't depend on x anymore. x is gone from the equation. This tells me something about this system. It tells me that these are always true. 
And maybe I did some other substitution and maybe get a different number, like 5 equals 5 or something like that. Well, that's always true. What this means is that we have a dependent system. These are actually the same line. Now, had I put it in standard form to begin with, I would have seen that they're the same line. So let's go ahead and back to our original. And we know that this is a dependent system. It has infinite solutions because it depends on the point of, on the line in which we choose. It will be a solution. So let's put them in the same form. I'm going to put this one in slope-intercept form by dividing by 2. Solving for y is how we put it in slope-intercept form. If I divide this by 2, I get y. If I divide that by 2, I get negative 3x. Now I'm going to put this one in slope-intercept form. I just have to solve for y, and I do that by subtracting 3x. Well, 0 minus 3x is negative 3x. And if we look at these two, this one was from that equation, and this one was from that equation, they are the same equation. A dependent system. There are infinite solutions because they are the same line, one right on top of the other. They intersect everywhere that line exists. So this has been section 8.2, Solving Systems of Linear Equations Using Substitution. The next one, we're going to introduce a new method. And it's solving by the addition method, also known as elimination. So watch video 8.3, and you'll have a new tool in order to solve systems of equations. Thank you for watching.